I'm Porter William, and I've been entertaining, event planning, and cooking for over 25 years. Finally, I get to share my secrets with you. No matter if you have a one-room apartment or a grand-scale estate, we'll learn how to entertain from San Francisco to the beaches of Spain, from menu planning to tablescapes, I'll teach you how to entertain from the heart. From a memory, make a memory. Join me as we entertain the world one table at a time, next on Entertaining People. Well, welcome to my kitchen. Again, I'm Porter William and this is Entertaining People. And tonight we're having a cocktail party. I'm having some great friends over. We've got a night on the town plan. And if you've never done it, it's a great way to entertain. You know, I love cooking tarts. So I think to make it simple, I'm just gonna cook three different types of tarts tonight. We'll grab them, we'll have some cocktails and it's gonna be great fun. So let's get started on our first one. This lavash crisp starts with just a simple marinara sauce. Well, so you see how easy the sauce goes on. I'm just gonna grab a second piece of our lavash, lay it down on our tray, pull those out. By the way, this is an unbuttered, ungreased tray. Do you remember when you were finger painting as a kid? Oh my gosh, it was always so fun to get stuff everywhere. And when I'm in the kitchen, I've got my hands in everything. I've got some beautiful marinated artichoke hearts. I just give them a little squeeze when I put them on. You don't even need to chop them. Just squeeze them in your hand. Just think of Italy and the smells and the sounds of the Mediterranean. I'll never forget that night trying to get in to see the Pope. You should have seen this with hundreds of thousands of people. And my buddy and I drank in Chianti and uh, eating a tart that was just like this. We're gonna do the same thing with these great roasted red and yellow peppers. I'm just gonna tear them apart with my hands. This isn't a fancy meal at all. We're just gonna lay the strips over. Where the seeds are is where the heat's gonna be. So if you want something that's just not quite so pungent, not so hot, feel free to go ahead and pull the seeds off and rinse your hands off. But right now I'm just gonna break this up a little bit and we'll plop one on. In fact, I think what I'm liking to do is I think I'm gonna do one with all my yellow peppers and I think I'll do the second one with all red peppers. Maybe I'll have a guest that loves yellow and doesn't like red. We're just gonna lay those on there. Well, there's a big piece, look at that, that is gorgeous. Olive oil, garlic, spices, this is love right here. Last thing is my freshly grated Parmesan cheese. You know, in today's world, once again, there's no reason to put yourself through a whole lot of trouble. Great products at your local trader stores, great purveyors that are in, in, in most major cities. We're here in San Francisco and we've got so many great places to choose from. So let's just top that with a little bit of cheese. I guess we're doing about, a, probably about a cup between that. If you're ever in the Mediterranean, anywhere, you'll notice that there's an oil that's on all the tables in the pizzerias. It's just a hot infused oil, and I think it's wonderful. You should see them when I'm coming through customs with a bottle of this. It costs about $1.50 in the grocery stores, and I love it, and I sprinkle it over the top, and it's done. One of the great things about tarts is that you can just cook them in sequence, put them all at 400, put them in one first and take them out as you go. So I'm gonna put this in the oven and pretty soon we are gonna have a great lavash tart from the Mediterranean. I'll be right back to show you our next course. Here we are with our ingredients for our next tart for our cocktail party. And one of the things I wanted to show you is just that. Did you see how that all came out of the refrigerator? Actually, it's not just for TV. This is really how I cook, and it's one of the big secrets of entertaining. You've got to be able to make it easy. So I've got things ready. I have all the ingredients ready, and I keep everything on one tray. I have one of these little grease boards that says notes, and my next thing is my niçoise tart, which I'm going to do for you right now. So I just keep this handy. Most people don't even know I have it. I put it right here, and it keeps me on track all night long when I'm entertaining. About seven 17 years ago, the first time I was in Nice, France, and anywhere in the Mediterranean, especially along that coast, you find these wonderful olives, you'll find great cheeses, the freshest butter, wonderful anchovies that come right out of the Mediterranean. They taste fantastic. And of course, our gray sel gris, our sea salt and sugar, and our sage, as well as wonderful onions and fresh thyme. Now my twist on this from being a European tart is I'm using American Vidalia onions. I love Vidalia onions and they're like biting into a sweet apple. So we're gonna get busy putting this together. It's really quite simple. I'm using a store-bought frozen puff pastry. 
don't hassle with trying to make it yourself. The chefs in the restaurants, they don't do it. They buy it frozen and so should you. This is really more of a sheared onion, so it's a very, very thin, thin, thin chop. And you can see how thin those are. It's because you want them to cook down very quickly and you also, when you're biting into it, you don't want big long strings of onions coming out of everybody's mouth. So I've already got some of our sheared onions in here. We're gonna add a few more to the pot and we're gonna get that cooking. Right away, you wanna go ahead and add a full cube of butter because that's what really caramelizes these. They're gonna be translucent, a golden yellow, and they're just gonna have enough sweetness and tartness to make them real tasty. Now I'm gonna add some sugar, which goes right into the onions. Again, think of caramel, right? Caramel sugar. We're gonna add just a few, few handfuls of that and we'll go ahead and we'll get some of our beautiful celery, which I'll be telling you about a little bit later, and we're gonna get those cooking. Now it's gonna take about 20 minutes actually to sweat these down. That really is the word, you wanna sweat them. You want all the juices and you want all of the sugars and all the glucans and everything to come out of the onions and make this beautiful, beautiful sauce. So when we come back, we'll take a look at our caramelized onions and we'll assemble our tart. Now I'm going to go check on our Vidalia onions that we're caramelizing. See how they're doing here in the pan. They look great. I want you to focus on that golden brown color. We are just waiting for all those sugars to come out and all that flavor. I'm also just going to throw in a couple sprigs of thyme. Sweet and easy. And of course this is the point where we add our salt and we add our pepper. And of course from the region of the south of France, our herbs of Provence. A splash of that and this is ready to go. Now it's time to assemble our Niçoise Vidalia onion tart. Here are beautifully caramelized onion. Watch this, it's so simple. Spread them out on your puff pastry. Oh my gosh, you guys should smell this. This is amazing. Look how easy. Get all that, you see that juice? That is the nectar of the gods. And this takes fingers. So go ahead and just spread out your, your uh, caramelized onions and your herbs all over the tart. Look how easy that is. We're gonna add our Niçoise olives. Simple as can be. Now using this puff pastry means that this whole thing is gonna puff up. Wait till you see it come out. It's gonna completely impress your friends. And look how simple it is. Make sure you get, you want an olive in every bite. So go ahead and and uh, spread them around and have it make some sense. Don't leave empty corners like that because they're gonna burn. Now I know for all of you non-believers, anchovies really are an acquired taste. In fact, I have to tell you, um, as a kid, my father always ordered anchovies on his pizza. <laughs> and we would go to this place called Me and Ed's in Southern California, and uh, he would always have them in the old days. Remember how you could split the ingredients? They would put a piece of foil down the middle of the pizza. Since then, my dad and I have traveled to the south of France, to Nice many times. In fact, it's one of our most favorite spots to go. If you have a guest or two that doesn't like the anchovy, offer them another one of the tarts. It's really, really good. Don't waste this. A little bit of the anchovy oil right over the top. Ah, that is fantastic. Touch more sugar, okay. Let's hit it some more with our silagri. Get a little texture on there. And I think we're gonna be fine with just a nice, beautiful, sprig of sage we'll get that going here a couple sage leaves on the top that's going to permeate through the entire puff pastry as it cooks and i think our flavors are basically done it's that simple so we have a niçoise tart going in the oven same temperature same rack it's going to be back in just a few minutes and so will i you know why we're waiting for that other tart i can smell the lavash is ready so let's go see what we've got there was nothing more fun than opening the oven door and finding out if it worked and it did ah what memories this brings back look at that it was so simple four ingredients be careful don't burn your hands when you're cooking right finish it with a little bit of celery from the mediterranean nice beautiful rough rock salt and then a drizzle of olive oil right over the top. That's gonna to soak in. These are gonna hold for a couple hours before my guest gets here. And I think, of course, we'll finish this once we get it to the table, but just for fun, a big old sprig of rosemary. Just got it out of the backyard, actually. So this is our lavash. So simple, so easy. It smells incredible, and your guests are gonna love it. 
Our third tart for our cocktail party tonight is actually inspired right here from Northern California, from the California wine country. What could be better for your guests than moving from the south of France, Rome, to the California wine country? And I'm going to show you how to make it into a wonderful, rustic, beautiful Sonoma smoked bacon and California fig tart. First of all, I want to talk about the easy ways that you can come up with a tart crust that makes it real simple because I've only got three friends coming over and we're only going to be together for an hour is I'm just going to go with a store-bought pie crust. Our key ingredients, of course, right here are these beautiful California figs. In most parts of the world, you can find these gorgeous, beautiful figs. You think, figs? Why, why would you ever think about it? They're sweet, they're luscious, they're delicious, and they have this wonderful balance from tangy to savory to sweet. So this has really got a lot of uh, savor in it on this one. We're going to have apple wood smoked bacon, wonderful rosé wine, Parmesan cheese, a beautiful hunk of gorgonzola. The complexity in this flavor is going to be two balsamic vinegars. The normal, beautiful, dark, which you can buy in any grocer. There's all different kinds of grades. Balsamic is grated basically like wine. And then a white balsamic, it's going to give it this fresh, bright overtone that really is going to enhance the flavor. Of course, our olive oil, butter, and sugar, and salt. Well, I don't know what other ingredient I love more than bacon. <laughs> I seem to be able to get it and do everything that I cook, but this is an apple wood smoked bacon. Just finishing chopping a rough chop. That's it. Cooked it up a little bit to render some of the fat off, and I'm gonna come over here, and uh, just like I do with my lid, we're gonna go ahead, I'll oh, smell that. Do you remember the smell of bacon when your mother cooked it for you? It's wonderful. We're gonna let that simmer up just a little bit on low, the next thing I need to do is get my red onions going. As usual with one of Porter's tarts, it's a pretty thin chop. Just gonna finish up on a whole red onion on this one. And this is again, is a little bit more rustic. You can go ahead and actually just give it a big chop. And I'm gonna go ahead and add these gorgeous onions to this. This is gonna cook down. That's about all we need. We'll reserve those for later. Now comes the fun. So we've got all these beautiful bits of flavor and bites of love on the bottom of this pan and we're gonna deglaze it. We're gonna start with our wine. Go ahead and add our dark balsamic vinegar. You'll figure it out. You don't need all, this, all the uh, measurements perfectly because that's gonna tell you exactly what you want. And then we're gonna do our white balsamic which is just gonna add that lovely fresh tinge right on top. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful color. So we're gonna let that simmer pretty pretty high, actually. We want those to sweat down. Let's cover that, and then we'll come back and let's get to work on our figs right over here. Pre-chopped here. What I want you to see is that if you come in really close here, you'll see that there's a little stem on the end of that. That's no fun to bite into. Even best friends tell you when you got a fig in your tooth, but you do not want this in your tooth. So very simply, make sure your knife is clean. Cut that off, discard it, slice it once like that. That's simple. So we're just going to push those to the side, give that a slice. If you look in there, that, folks, is a California fig. Look at that lovely, beautiful flavor. So I've got a pot going over here with some of our figs in it. And there's a, about a half a cube of butter. And stir our figs in the butter. And we're going to start just reducing these just for a minute. Look at that. Those are absolutely beautiful. And we're going to cover that and give those probably about uh, four or five minutes just to sweat down just a little bit. I've decided to use a pre-made pie crust, but I'm gonna do it on a pizza stone. You can buy these at any of your bed and bath shops and they really do create that great, wonderful European flavor. But this is Sonoma and it's cooking on a rock as I call it, which is so fun. When you get this out, just kind of crimp it up a little bit. Give it a couple notches with your knife. Remember, this is sweet and savory on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle it with some sugar just on the bottom of my crust. And we'll hit it with a little bit of kosher salt because salt and sugar makes the flavor complete. You can see we've got two things happening side by side. Our figs are starting to soften up because they are dried and it's important that we get them nice and moist through and through, and that's right where you want it. You see where that butter is getting brown right there? That's exactly where you want it. And it's just simple, folks. It's gonna just drop right in there. 
we'll turn that aside. By the way, that's my favorite thing. If you're, if you're ever without your hot pad, use your tongs. I'm never too far without my tongs. And we're gonna mix that up. If you have a food processor, it's great. If you don't have one, you should get one. I've already got a little bit of our paste in here, but I just wanna let you know that this is all we're gonna do at this point. We're gonna reach and take about half of the figs right off the top, some of the onions, and a little bit of that juice, as it's that simple. And what we're making is a paste. Just imagine a real thick jelly that you might buy in the store. I'm gonna go ahead and drain all that beautiful flavor right off there. That's what I'm left with, just a couple of the whole figs because I want some texture to it. I don't wanna be biting into a jelly tart. I wanna have a base and then I want some texture. So we'll just set that aside, let that cool. And I've got a low blade on it. We're gonna turn on our processor, a couple quick pulses. Always be very careful when you're working with hot liquids in a food processor. And now that looks safe and we're just gonna turn that on. Let's just look inside really quick. That's perfect. All right, I'm gonna pop it off and we are gonna take this gorgeous California fig paste. Mm. Wow, that is something. Who would have thought all this loving would have come from that little thing? Spread it out. And when you see this pie crust come out, you're gonna think I worked all day on it. But you know what? At a certain point, you really, when it comes to entertaining, you gotta be smart and you have to have it make sense and you have to have fun. Make your life easy. Let the grocer and the modern day world help you out. So we have our base on our tart. It's this simple. I'm gonna go back here, grab my chunky, gorgeous balsamic red onions and my whole figs. Wow, this is gonna be incredible. Woo! You can smell the acid coming from the balsamic vinegar and then that beautiful, beautiful blush California rose wine in there. Let's get that right on top of there. Look how lovely that is. Don't waste anything. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and start with a little bit of my gorgonzola and I just like to chunk it off with my knife. But you know when you entertain, one of my biggest secrets over the years has been to put out a lot of everything because when people see it, they think, wow, I get to have all of this or look how much work went into it. Put it out, you can always have it later. You can take it to work, share it with your friends. I don't end anything without the shot of my gray salt, my beautiful European salt, a teeny bit of Parmesan because we wanna control the salt content in this at this point. It's salty. You gotta love that. Oh man, that's great. Okay, on the pizza stone, in the same oven, with the same other tart that we've got going on, we're getting ready to fire up in the old world style. I'm telling you, it smells like the south of France. I know this is ready. This is our, ah yes, there it is. Oh, look at that. That is our puff pastry. Vidalia onion niçoise tart with anchovies. You never knew anchovies could look so good. Go down to the store, the restaurant supply, buy yourself a pizza peel. You should never be without one. Watch how easy this is gonna be. Hold the other side. Remember it's ungreased. Pick it up and that is pure love. And smell those anchovies, those olives. So remember that our herb was thyme. I'm just gonna add a sprig right on the top here. A big one actually. I like this really, really rustic. And a little bit of sugar right at the very end, just on the edge of that, just to soften those salty flavors that are in the anchovies. And look at that store-bought puff pastry. It came out beautiful, that's all I did. I just poked it a few times, put it in the oven, put some great flavors together that came from a memory, and we have a dynamite piece that my guests are gonna love. So we're almost finished cooking. We've got one more thing to do. We're gonna prepare a seared scallop with mandarin oranges, wasabi, and some rice wine vinegar, and a kick of hot Chinese pepper sauce. Get a perfectly clean towel right from your laundry, and you wanna dry these scallops. That's the first thing that you wanna do. A couple dashes of our hot oil. Drop those scallops in there. Just gonna hit it with a little bit of rice wine vinegar right at the very end. To finish it off, these are gonna to need to cool just a little bit. And again, we wanna drain it. Put our scallops together. And then a side of a mandarin orange. There we go, that little guy's missing one. But what I love to do is just 
a little dab. Look at that color on there. Just a little dab of wasabi. Just cutting off some chives. Grab two and just simply do a crisscross on each one of those. Look how simple that is. There it is, our last appetizer for tonight's party. We have a beautiful seared Chinese scallop with a mandarin orange that's gonna soothe the palate. That's gonna balance that kick of that great wasabi chives on a wonderful thin sesame wafer. I've gotta go set my table and make some cocktails. So I'll see you right back here real soon. These are what I call my mess kits. These are just little individual trays, but really what's gonna make this night special is I'm not gonna have to worry about where their food is, what they're spilling. I'm gonna give everybody their tray individually. A tray for each person, right? And I found these fantastic miniature ice cups with these little leather handles at a discount store. The first thing, of course, that you need if you're gonna eat is a napkin. So I'm simply gonna put the little ice bucket in there, put the napkin in there, gotta have a fork. Folks, listen, no plastic. The park is for plastic, the beach is for plastic, but let your guest feel like guests. We're gonna put a little shot of Stoli for them to take in the cab, and since we don't have time for dessert on the way to the show, some dinner mints and chocolates, and the best thing is that I've got them already done right over here. Any minute now, my guests are gonna be arriving. I'm gonna light the candles because this is lights, camera, action. We're done. I'm gonna run upstairs, change my shirt, put on something for the theater, and wait for the doorbell to ring. We've made it. We've got a cocktail party ready for friends. It's a pre-party for a night on the town. But instead of being in the kitchen or anywhere else, I've just set up a little bar right here in the living room. And tonight we're serving three kinds of martinis which I think is gonna be a gas. The first one that we're gonna do is sparkling pomegranate martini with this wonderful juice. And the great thing about this is that if you have a non-drinker that's coming, you also have this option for them. So you can make them the exact same martini without the alcohol and it's gonna be beautiful. We're gonna garnish that with fresh pomegranate seeds on top of that. Of course, we're gonna use a great vodka on this one, Stola Schneil. Then the next one that we're gonna have, I'm really excited about, it's gonna be a pear teeny. We're using this great pear vodka with garnish with a slice of pear. And then of course, the classic martini. You can't have a cocktail party without the classic James Bond martini. We've got, although his was gin, we've got vodka, our vermouth, and of course our olives, and some great salty olive juice. You know, whenever you do a night like this, find something that somebody gave you or some connection with anybody that's gonna be at your home. This bowl was given to me by my friend Herb, who's gonna be here real shortly, years ago, and I'm using it tonight as an ice bucket. We've got everything we could possibly need for a quick nosh and a libation before we hit the town. And actually, I think I hear the door right now, so I'm gonna go get it. Welcome. Yeah, come on in. We need some cocktails. My friends are here. I can't wait to have them. We've got three kinds of martinis tonight. Okay. Your choice is pomegranate, pear, or just a traditional martini. Who's up for what? The dirty. I know you're gonna be the, the, Give it the dirty. You're gonna get the dirty? Okay, yeah. absolutely. Pomegranate for me. Pomegranate. And I'll try the pear. Three olives, I know, for you, right? Pick a glass. How about the one with the olive? Yeah, yeah we've got two. Come on up, I was two. I'll take the one with the pear. That's the one I gave you. That is the one you gave me. Wow. I, what are we, pomegranate or pear? Pear. We're pear, all right. Pear teeny, this is gonna be so easy. And I already put a little simple syrup in here, which makes it very nice. Hey, listen to great friends. It's so good to have Cheers. you here. Cheers. Cheers to pear teenies, martinis. Oh, Welcome to the house the once again. Mm. Oh, that's great. Yummy. You guys, Dirty. we can't have a great cocktail without some great food. Why don't you come with me and we'll go get something to eat. Ooh, what a treat. All right. Let's go. We don't have much time. That's and good. listen, I've made it completely simple for you. Each of you has your own mess kit. So for the messy ones, and I know who you are, by the way, you can be you can be messy. And we got a little traveling surprise for you. On our way to the theater tonight, a little shot to take with us. Right your fork, your napkin, and some chocolates just to cleanse the palate. All right, thank you, darling. Plates first. Oh, thank you. This is it. Isn't that great? This is a California fig tart. This is a 
fresh sprig of gorgonzola in there. And then this is a beautiful, for those of you who don't like anchovies, I'm gonna give you a piece without. This is a Niçoise Vi Vidalia onion tart. You can get some of that in here. And this is a beautiful seared scallop with a mandarin orange and wasabi on top. And this is a lavash with some beautiful artichokes. It's wonderful. So you got your napkin. You're all set. We'll see you in the other room. Okay, That's over there. Thank Another you. piece. <laughs> Can you imagine? I just. <laughs> just well, okay, so what's your what's your favorite on there? And her, you think you can manage with your little travel hey, kit? Of course, I love it. They don't leave it home without it. Good. It's great. Mm. Mm. Another one. Another night out. Oh my god. We're gonna have way too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> just well, okay, so what's your Everybody got your bucket? Yeah. Okay, fine. let's go. Yeah. That's it. Another great episode of entertaining people. Another great night with friends. Friends who really have become family. Pomegranate martinis, pear teenies, 200 year old vessels to hold our napkins in. And of course, great takeouts because we're going to see a show. We've got tickets. Everybody's downstairs in the cab and I've got to say goodnight. Thanks for joining me. Come back, see us again. We love entertaining people and from my heart to yours, have a great night.